crypto markets are showing impressive signs of life. As Bitcoin makes new highs for the year, many other coins have followed, including Solana, which has made an impressive return in the last month alone. This has turned many heads and has caused lots of people to take a closer look at the ecosystem and say, hey, What's actually going on behind the scenes? What are the developments in this space that could cause people to become long-term bullish on this technology as we gear up for the next wave of crypto expansion? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to break down this video today you know, as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to get ahead of the next crypto wave and become a blockchain master before things get crazy again, then I can show you how to do that step by step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this. So first of all, obviously nothing I'm saying in this video is designed to be financial advice. This is for educational purposes about what's happening with the actual technology inside of the Solana ecosystem. Okay. So that being said, you know, one of the reasons that Solana is top of mind right now is because, you know, it's had impressive price performance in the last month alone. And a lot of people are comparing it to the cycle that Ethereum had back in 2018 and 2019. So if you think that that was a bear market, a lot like the bear market that we're in right now, and you look at the price of Ethereum back then and the chart and the price performance, it looks eerily similar to what's happening in Solana right now. Okay. And also in terms of the technical side of things about what's actually happening in the ecosystem, you know, back in 2018, 2019, I was here through the whole time and I witnessed the birth of decentralized finance or DeFi in the side of the Ethereum ecosystem. And also, you know, what was happening with the rebirth of NFTs that both of these things ultimately play, you know, poured fire on the 2021 bull market. And some of the developments that we're seeing inside the Solana ecosystem have strange parallels to these types of advancements that happened during that last bear market. So let's take a look at what some of those things are. So the first thing is the development of Fire Dancer. Okay. So this is one of the number one things that's been getting buzzed lately from Solana. Okay. So what is it? Why is everybody talking about it? Well, it is a new Solana validator client. Okay. So if you're not familiar with that, what does that mean? So every single blockchain has, you know, this redundant set of computers that participates in running the network. Bitcoin's got miners, Ethereum has validators, and Solana also has validators. And they run a piece of software on their computer to do this called a client. Okay. So FireDancer is a new client that increases the scalability of the Solana network. In particular, FireDancer boasts to increase the throughput of the network by 10x. Okay. So what does that actually mean? Well, when you're talking about blockchain scalability, that has two different aspects. One is the transactions per second it can process, and the second one is the block time. That's you know how, much, how long does it take a transaction to get included in the block. So really, it you know increases the bandwidth, the central bottleneck by which transactions go through, and lets you fit a lot more data through that central bottleneck by a factor of 10. So basically, FireDancer claims to take Solana's existing 125 megabytes per second of processing power up to 1,250 megabytes per second or 10x the scalability. All right, so reason number two is the actual adoption of the Solana technology itself, mostly for payments, okay, among other things, but payments is an important one, which I'm gonna explain right now. So this is actually with Visa, all right? So I actually covered this when it came out and I covered it when it first came out, which was back in 2021, uh, Visa partnered with crypto.com to implement a crypto payments pilot program. Okay, they started off doing this on Ethereum back in 2021, and they've expanded that pilot project to include Solana as of September 5th, 2023. Now, this deserves attention for a few reasons. You know, I've talked about on this channel extensively how payments are easily a use case that, you know, by themselves could take crypto to the level of mass adoption. If you throw out DeFi, throw out NFTs, throw out every use case you could think of that might work out eventually, Payments alone could do it because nearly everyone in the world pays for things and a large chunk of these transactions happen electronically through debit cards, uh, credit cards, or some type of online payment, okay? Visa is a leader in this space and they're exploring the potential of blockchain for this. And so one outcome that I see uh, happening on the horizon is that you have people using Visa to pay for things with the user experience that they're used to now, you know, swiping their cards or paying for things online but behind the scenes, we're actually using blockchains to help facilitate these transactions, okay? Where the end user doesn't need a crypto wallet, they don't even have to know they're using crypto or a blockchain, and you get the benefits of the technology 
without them having to change how their behavior at all. And this is one big reason that this deserves attention is because of that potential that use case and how Solana is being included into this pilot from Visa. All right, so another big development inside the Solana ecosystem that people are talking about quite extensively is the DPIN sector. So what is that? Well, basically it stands for decentralized physical infrastructure. So what does that mean? Well, basically it means crowdsourcing computational resources, okay? So th there's two places we already do this that I think you might be understand, be able to understand if I explain it. One is we already, you know, crowdsource computer power for blockchains. So like I was talking about before, uh, with Bitcoin, you have Bitcoin miners that are offering their computational resources to run the blockchain, okay? But all that does is, you know, they mine Bitcoins. They don't do anything else. They just run the blockchain. But what if you could extract this to other use cases besides just running blockchains? Like, what if you have people around we have people sitting around with, you know, computers that are able to do computation and you could just get everybody to participate in that process. Okay. So what would that look like? Like what if you needed a computer to run artificial intelligence models or run web servers to power the internet? Well, we already have this with things like Amazon Web Services or AWS, right? Or Google Cloud Computer or GCP, but it's completely centralized. Okay. What if you could take everybody with all these computers sitting at home and you could connect them together to create these decentralized networks that do things like, you know, host artificial intelligence models or websites or any type of web backend in a decentralized way where these users could be compensated for offering their computation resources for that, where they could get paid to do it and there's actually a monetary incentive. Well, that's basically the entire idea behind DPIN or decentralized physical infrastructure. And so why could that be important? Well, again, this is an early use case but it's a blockchain use case that has nothing to do with crypto. So said another way, it's not about financial speculation. It's not about investing or value accrual, but you know, putting something on chain that people are willing to pay for, but it's not cryptocurrency related. And it's also important because this is a use case that's particularly emerging within the Solana ecosystem. Now, earlier I talked about how Ethereum saw the birth of decentralized finance or DeFi in the middle of the bear market. NFTs start to really flourish after they launched at the end of 2017, early 2018. This, in my mind, you know, could be a similar analogy to new technology inside of an ecosystem like this during a bear market. All right, so the last big thing to catch up on the Solana ecosystem is really facing the big problems that people have with the chain in the first place. And that comes down to the two kind of things I'm going to talk about. Number one is outages, and number two are the insiders, okay? So let's start off with the outages. So Solana, you know, in years past has been notorious for outages, basically where the blockchain would temporarily go down and people couldn't use it for a period of time. So frankly, that's not really a good look because one of the promises of blockchain is that the network's on all the time. It's got 100% uptime and you don't ever have to worry about, can I use this now to access my funds? Well, we've had a number of developments like quick priority fees and a fee market adjustments as well as spam blocking that's made significant progress in the area. At the time I record this video, if you look at the status.solana.com website that shows you the network uptime, we haven't actually had a major network outage uh, since February of 2023, which is a pretty big improvement from years past. And so we'll continue to monitor this and see if this holds up, especially if we enter into another frothy period of high network activity during a crypto bull market. And the other big problem, you know, is the insiders, one of the biggest insiders that, um, you know, people were worried about with the Solana ecosystem was what's happening with Sam Bankman Freed. FTX and Alameda. And while we're not completely out of the woods with this, uh, with the whole FTX saga, you know, Sam Bankman Freed has been found guilty of all charges, you know, has yet to be sentenced at the time of recording this video. And that's one major problem for the ecosystem that we can start to put in the rearview mirror. Now, it's not there completely, but it is significant progress in that direction. Now, this is just a short list of some of the big developments that people have been talking about on the Solana network. And by no means is an exhaustive list. So what are my thoughts? Well, my thoughts, you know, definitely that Solana to technology most likely is here to stay. Obviously, I have no crystal ball to know what's going to happen with the cryptocurrency price. My best guess is that the Solana technology itself will coexist alongside Ethereum, you know, for other use cases and trade-offs. Okay. Yeah, you know, this makes sense because we see this type of thing all the time with, you know, pairs of two with popular, you know, brands or technology. Think about like Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Those are the two things you think of oftentimes if you're thinking of soda. 
uh, or you know other mobile technology like Nokia and Samsung. The list just kind of goes on and on. So I think it's got a good shot at staying top of mind in that regard. And so we'll still have to wait and see if this continues to get meaningful traction and adoption throughout the next crypto expansion. But these are definitely positive developments in that regard. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I want to hear from you. And once you leave your comment, you know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am and you want to get your hands dirty today and get ahead of the next crypto wave and become a blockchain master, then I can share to do that step-by-step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.